Hello. Thanks for watching. Hello. Thanks for watching. Oh, that's weird. I can hear myself. <laughs> sound check test. How do I sound out there? All right, well, I guess I'll wait for the sound check feedback, but getting right into it, uh, something I forgot to do for a while. Ramiros, plugin names are wrong. Frozen. Hmm. No sound. Oh. Hello. Cam frozen. Oh, you know, that might be a your thing, your phone issue. Maybe reload the page. Um, I think I'm good because I heard myself. <laughs> anyway, back into it. Um, yeah. So, yeah, starting off today, I'm going to... Yes, hello, greetings, Gonzo. Uh, can I get a sound check, please? All good now, Small? Thank you. Uh, yeah, so, uh, let's see here. My intent was, let's open up the e-shell buffer. And let's just get a... There we go. My original instinct was right. Excuse me. Hmm. Hope you're doing okay out there today. editor is speaking to me. Uh, there's some way to tell it no by default, but I forget. All right. So it looks like Rem AC, Rem AI. Uh, yeah, I kind of just Went through like the first couple steps and then just got going off into this one. Somebody on Discord reminded me about the whole Remy thing. So uh, let's take a quick gander since you're here. I didn't really sound check. We'll call that good. I didn't really look too much at things uh, specifically on GitLab, but the meat of the stream today is probably going to be looking at things on here and making sure, you know, that uh, basics are covered, bug fixes are, are handled. I want to get those out before we do really neat stuff. I wanted to look at this one because uh, maybe you noticed somebody mentioned that one on Discord. <clears throat> out of the box, compatible with BCOM. Always a good appeal. Uh, and then, yeah, well, you know, we'll roll with it. So, yeah, whatever will be in GitLab, and we'll try to knock a bunch of those out. There's a, there's quite a few uh, in there that are related to, like, dirty plugins and stuff. Um, that'll be interesting to go through. So back to it. Just trying to see. It doesn't look like any of the vanilla plugins changed names. So. Oh, yes. We swap some letters around. Oh my.
got these ones down here. Oh, did I? Good catch. Let's see. W-A-G-T-R. Huh. I sure did. Oh, oh, that's why. I accidentally put myself into overwrite mode. Don't try this at home. Okay. Good catch. Thanks for that, Gonzo. Let's, uh, oh yeah, I did this last night, um, changed the post-processing order based on feedback from Abdu. I pinged Abdu on Discord because I remember, you know, they're very knowledgeable about that stuff, and uh, I totally forgot about the pins. There's pins in the Shaders channel. Um, so yeah, anyway, let's commit this first. Oh, yeah, sure. Thank you. Yeah, I'm trying to... Let me know if this is better, Gonzo. I was trying to uh, work with a new configuration on my interface that peaks a little bit less, staying in the green a bit more, but how's that? Hopefully this is better. Nice. All right. Thank you for the feedback. All right. Sorry about the low volume until now. Let's go ahead and get a change log up. Yeah, audio production is a very fun, another fun rabbit hole, you know, um, that can be endlessly tweaked, not unlike modding. Um, there's literally so many knobs that I can play with. Yeah, it can be a little overwhelming. <laughs> and let's just mention on here that we changed the name of the plugins. Um, I'm sure this is something that most people could figure out when their game blows up when they put the wrong thing in, but we will do due diligence here. But let's cover. This will be a less noisy, hopefully. There we go. All right. Uh, I mean, all of these minus Starwind. Quick look at that. And while that's crunching, back to the plan here. Okay. Um, yeah, while that's crunching, let's just take a look at Nordic Dagon Fell. Which uh you know, it's been over a year since I played, so I don't really remember. And I've only been on one full playthrough with BCOM, so I don't really remember what they do that area apparently not much if anything and this is compatible out of the box which is always you know really great let's just take a look at some of these pictures cool 
cool. Yeah, it's definitely in line with uh, some of the content you see by, you know, the various contributors to BCOM. So cool. You know, it has a great aesthetic. Lots of neat clutter everywhere. I live there. Cool, yeah, this is one. <clears throat> Once we get through all the bug fixes and getting things in order so people have a good experience without trouble, I want to look at things like this to add into there. You know, I don't honestly foresee any, like, giant... The last update was giant and, and world-changing, literally, because we added beautiful cities of Morrowind into the mix. I don't honestly foresee a, a change that size coming ever, but maybe little things now and then it's like this one. To sort of, you know, flesh out the experience or, or you know, any other good quest mods that roll out. I don't know if, if Billy Fighter or anybody else has been busy. Certainly MD, MD has. Excuse me for a moment. I'm going to shovel down some berries. All right. Oh, you know what? I know what I missed. Gosh, I really need to automate this thing somehow. But I find commit hooks annoying. I mean, conceptually, they're great. More so on the remote side. Uh, you know, client side commit hooks, less great. In my experience, I've used them. They can work. It's hard. All right. That's what we need. I'll just pretend that that's there. We can see it in the list change log at least. <clears throat> Excuse me. New plugin names. Blah. TR at the end now. There we go. And for posterity. Mm. There we go. So many buttons. There we go. Fantastic. We'll throw that one in there. All right. Cool. Uh, let's see here. Done. Technically done. We looked at it, right? And I definitely want to add it. It looks awesome. GitLab issues. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh. excuse me. Zoom in a little bit because I'm an old person. Ooh, you know what? And one thing I thought of too, I could look at the. There's a bug in Natural Character Growth and Decay Lua Edition. Level one is a special case. So, of course, there's a bug with it. How did the recording go for Enwa's guide? Uh, Gonzo says, Oh, yeah. Thank you for reminding me about that. 
I wanted to actually add that to the website today. Um, I figured that's a minor enough addition that it can go in with the bug fixes, you know. But uh, I mean, the recording went pretty good. Actually, um, if you know anything about audio recording, I'm not, I don't really know jack about it. I just know enough from, you know, doing various, I did a couple open MW release videos and I've done audio for a couple of mods. And one thing I noted is when I, when I recorded my audio based on how I know that I'm supposed to do it. So let, let me actually let me show you the track. How I know I'm supposed to do is you're supposed to leave some, some headroom as they call it right in your, on your waveform here. And when I did that, I found that my audio was super quiet in game. Even when I put the, you know, the, there's like a value for volume in the plugin. Um, and it was super quiet. I couldn't hear it uh, compared to the music. Now I jacked my music up a bit. Um, so maybe that was partially it. But um, as you can see here on the waveform, I'm like nearly clipping. You can see my mic input here happening. I'm clipping into here because I'm getting loud. Um, but yeah, so I ended up like kind of violating what I thought I was supposed to do for recording a little bit. And it came out, I think with a clearer audio that might actually be borderline too loud. I don't know. We'll see, but yeah, it went well. Thank you. And I ended up, so I ended up, can I ended up canning the, um, I had originally set it up so that there was a, uh, a greeting when you walked past the NPC, I would be like, Hey, just, you know, um, that ended up being kind of not the greatest thing because then, you know, you could like just right click or activate the NPC and then I would start saying the other spiel and then I would be saying two things at once, which was really jarring. So I can that. Um, there's just the spiel when you talk to me, but now if you talk to me again, I'm not going to greet you again. I'll just be like, oh, hey, what's up? Um, and yeah, for context, those of you watching after the fact, it's just this thing that I made, which is uh, we'll look at a little bit later. I'll put it on the website, but... um basically a mod that I created for people following the mod lists of the website, primarily Expanded Vanilla and Total Overhaul. And uh, the idea is, if the web page will ever load, come on, GitLab, that there's a, a companion book that will sort of remind you of kind of the stuff that you added that you should check out that you might have forgotten about, you know, because it takes some time to, to get through everything. So, okay, but anyway, back to this. All right, yeah, that's right. Uh, Settiness from IRC, helpfully submitted some some problems here. This one, let's take a look at this one first. Oh my, quite a few. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, GitLab, thank you. GitLab, desperate for attention over here. <laughs> All right. So my first question is, what is my, you know, this is my personal configuration? Because a lot of these, I think I probably, you know, I wrote the validator. I definitely run it. I think you asked me the other day, Gonzo, how often do I run Delta plugin? And the answer is like, I don't know, a couple of what, is it a day ending in Y? You know, a couple of times a day usually. But I also run the validator just as frequently. Basically, anytime I make any change to the configuration, I run the validator. Because ideally, it catches everything that I could potentially botch. And uh, so, I mean, I've clearly hit these and probably fixed them a lot. So let's see, optional animation fix. Yeah, I definitely don't have this one here in my personal setup. So I fixed it and then just forgot to port that forward to the website. Oops, that's my bad. Hide like animal pelts. Like, uh, yep. Also gone. So I love a good. Also gone. Ooh, mic fuzz. Oh no. I might be too close to the mic. Or something. <laughs> All right, let me know if it gets a little better. I'm going to turn my gain down a little bit. All right, cool. Hmm. Might 
do just a strictly mic testing stream later on today. We can have fun with that. Um, all right. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for the sound check support, Gonzo. Appreciate it. Big skeletons. Let's jump to there. It's hard for me because, like, I don't know. Like, I was telling my wife last night, I like to talk loud, but I also talk quiet and I and you know like finding the mic setting and also like am I back here am I back here or am I like really right here am I mouth breathing just gotta get good at mic stuff and get good at reading here we go fixed skeletons improve better skulls textures improve better skulls okay yeah don't have this one either Okay, so this will be this will be a good one that we can we can knock this one out pretty quick, I think. Pardon me while I chew on some berry. This one is interesting because I'm not showing it as fully replaced. So that means we need to have a look. What are we looking at here? <clears throat> Open the dialogue door. Yep. Don't try this at home. One file was replaced. Apparently it provides just two files. Very interesting. So. Hmm. What got replaced? I think this is a bug in the validator because ideally we'll have a line like this below you know that has this path it says here one file was replaced so it would say some path was replaced and we're not seeing that so oh my this is a validator bug now Steadiness says we're replaced by. Excuse me. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So that's the issue. So let's take a moment to RTFM. So honestly, uh, this is interesting because beautiful cities of Morrowind provides just this one and if you're using you know some of the Ubirith's legacy and related mods that change the exterior of Ubirith's legacy of Ubirith's grave you probably want this one I can't remember if I used to use it 
And I also can't remember. I always go House Telvani because why wouldn't I? And I honestly can't remember if this one provides any conflicts. Um, yeah. I guess more research is needed for this one. What does Uvira's grave look like? Built out a bit. Spoiler alert. Um, you know, with the GITD meshes. Wow, okay, well. I think what I'm going to do, maybe for tomorrow's stream, is build a script that basically power levels me through the quest line. So we can kind of see this happen. And it'll be also a good exercise in doing that. Um, building a script out. And basically what you're doing is you're saying journal, foo, 100 or whatever, and just completing all the, looking at the plugin or just knowing what you have to complete to get to the end and getting to the end so we can see it. So so yeah, this is going to be an unknown actually for now. Um, in my personal setup, it's not totally replaced because I got the uh, no Uvirat's grave. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I don't have any of these. Um, wow, well, okay. So uh, first off, I'll remove these and then we'll we'll take care of this second half here. So, all right. Very nice bug report. This is very helpful. Links and everything, everything I need. We're gonna go to the replacers file. Okay. Yikes. Explosion. All right. I love deleting things. It's easy. I love a good... No, no, no. I skipped a few. I skipped this one, too. I think I took care of this one. They reported it on the IRC. And I took care of this one. A complete mod. Uh, okay. A palace fire retexture. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. Sure is. Okay.
not gonna delete this one just because you know core may be useful on its own uh, I will put a note I just had a thought. Okay. Yeah, this could arguably be added to expanded vanilla. Expanded vanilla. Um, I even put the vanilla friendly tag on it. Um, and I would say the core folder applies. The option for just core applies to expanded vanilla. I feel like we should we should do that right now. We definitely should do that right now. Yeah, okay. This is and this is also a little ambiguous. What did I do? Okay. This is what we're going to do. When I don't like saying what you shouldn't use, let's say what you should use. Too much, too much, too much. series of wrong keystrokes. Okay. Better skulls. Okay. It is indeed not used. Fix skeletons. Away.
excuse me. Well, I think it's in order to say if you're using BCOM, you don't need this one. So let's do that. Oh my, what did I do? Another keystroke failure. In my quest to reduce keystrokes, causing me to type more keystrokes. Eventually, I have a plan for changing how we represent folder paths in some way. I haven't thought about how it's going to work now, but you can see right here we got just a field in the data and then a, a dictionary, which is a key value, this being the key right here and this being the value, key, value, and so forth. Some way to for the back end to be able to say, oh, it's, you know, we're looking at, just for example, we're looking at it, we're looking at beautiful cities of Morrowind through the mod list. You can see here in the URL. As opposed to just looking at the mod by itself. So the idea is, somebody clicking through the list like this would get excuse me, updated, correct information about plugins or folders. But I do know, you know, without experience, without exper having experiencing it firsthand, that it's likely, I bet a lot of people going through mod lists are doing so like this. And maybe they're not clicking the number, they're just clicking the name of the thing. And so then you're technically going through the mod list, but you don't have the right URL. And so that assumption is broken. So I don't think that's a good design. But I'm not sure how to design it correctly. But that's something I want to do so that it just updates right. And somebody back in the day, I want to say their name was Darks. I forget their username. I'm very sorry. It's the person who encouraged me to go open source with the website on the OpenMW forums. They suggested like a shopping cart kind of a setup, and I think that would be awesome where you could like tell the website using some JavaScript, you know, this is the web, so this is the mod list I'm doing, and I'm maybe adding or removing this, and then the CFG generator could like be adjusted appropriately. Um, that would be a great improvement to the website that we could do someday, but it would be a lot of work, and it has to be done thoughtfully. Yeah, it would kick ass for sure. But it's one of those things that, yeah, it just, you know, you got to really, we could just bang it out in a, you know, garbage way. And then we would just end up with tech debt. And, you know, I feel like it can be done thoughtfully. I just got to think about it a little bit more. And yeah, like I said, my original design, which sounded cool on paper, wouldn't work. It would not work. Um, what folder path are we skipping now? Jeez, I got distracted. This one. Oh my. Okay, this
this is a bit of a there's more here that we need to look at but let's just chew off this one bit at a time issue number 201 so I remember because I'm gonna commit this in small pieces but I want to refer them all back to the merge request okay So, really, each one is going to go uh, have a change log entry go along with it, too. All right. What did we update here? I love it. I should try to look at this. Might not have all the changes I need. Let's get that in there. Mm, no, definitely doesn't. Let's start the ritual database cleansing. And I can just roll along with it. Oh. Huh? Whoops. Yeah. Whoops. I didn't commit this along with the thing its change log exists for. No big deal. Probably an overly verbose commit message, <coughs> if I'm being honest, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. I love a good shoulders bugging me today. Yeah, we can look at it when it's done crunching. I'll commit that for now. Um, Actually, I'm sure that there's an issue for Ramiro's. Maybe this? Yeah. stop that. Let's go ahead and slap the issue number on here. trying to reword this one, but I don't want to try too hard. Okay. 
I'll tag that as appropriate later on. We'll come back to that. So thinking about it now, we don't want to remove that folder option, but maybe just say, hey, if you're on this mod list, you don't need it. It's not going to hurt to have it. You don't need it. Wow. Time is flying. I will say. Pardon me. <clears throat> Excuse me. I can almost just say mm, no. I prefer this I prefer this one greatly. <clears throat> Have the hides look like rugs. Just look then pieces of furry meat. I don't know. Looks better to me. So okay. Mm -hmm. And I guess I need a third. that the other thing skip the thing all right that looks good hm. comma fail I sound really quiet again. Uh oh. I'm going to try something and you let me know how it goes. I'm going to turn my gain up just a hair. Hopefully this helps. I love a good out. This in just for the sake of putting some noise through. And that actually remains true here. I've got 
accurately describes the change. How am I doing? Yay? Nay? I might also be mumbling. Hmm. Let's, I'll say something into the mic. I'm kind of trying to look at my interface, which glows according to uh, if I'm clipping or not. Let me pull that up a little bit, just a little bit. Hey, oh, hello, hello. Hi there, hiya. Oh, there we go, we're into the yellow now a little bit. There we go. <clears throat> All right. Thank you, Gonzo, appreciate that. Yeah, I don't know. One of these days I'll get it down <laughs> before the first hour is completed. <laughs> All right, back to business. That looks good. Did I forget something, though? I did. I totally forgot I like had the thought to add I Lava Good into Expanded Vanilla and I just didn't actually do it. Let's take a look back here. I sure didn't. Well, we'll throw that in here. We'll go ahead and throw that in here. much smaller flora section here. I think this is a really good addition though, honestly. Um, make sure I get the order right or the tests will blow up on me. I don't want to get slapped down by the tests. Love it. Hmm. First off, this was wrong. I goofed. Undid the thing that I want to do, actually. I actually really want that. I wonder, can you hear the motorcycle? Sorry, I'm trying to figure out how I goofed, but I'm not going to think about it too much. We can just throw this change log in with the Tomb of the Snow Prince, and it's not a big deal.
next. Okay. Let's see here. Glow in the dark. Excuse me. Oh my. I apologize about that. I have a doubt in my mind. Okay. Hmm. I doubted that graphics overhaul had this. It does. Whoops. First off. the change <clears throat> what is the change all right I'm having a doubt here. I shouldn't remove the option. I should put a note. Yeah. Oh, oh my. Instead, we're gonna Okadoke. That's the and actually 
This is now more true. That's better. This another one. I was a little hasty in deleting it, I think. We can simply say, if you're using a mod list, skip it. No need to strike the path from the record, I think. Could be useful to somebody who stumbles upon the page independent of a list or simply wants a reference. Ah, oh, bad aim. So many changes today. The commit log is going to be really annoying if anybody has to look at it. Well, it would annoy me <laughs> if I wasn't me here typing it right now and I was looking at it after the fact trying to reason about what I was doing I would be pretty annoyed by all this like what the hell but then again you know just take a quick look at the diff if you know what you're doing you'll know what you see anyway thinking out loud there All right, that should be everything, at least for the first chunk. We'll run tests and look at, you know, all of this, um, and we'll process the second part of the issue. Actually, that's a pretty good commit message. Because it tells me why. I can look at the diff and I can say, oh, well, that's what changed. That's obvious. <clears throat> what isn't captured in the code change is 
why did we remove it? And so that's sometimes important to include in the commit message. So when I complain about commit messages, that's usually what I'm talking about. Uh, okay. Um, where are we at now? Let's try, let's. By the way, that's not a hard rule about commit messages. That's just something I go by sometimes and it sometimes works. But if you got to sit here and spend a minute, you know, five minutes thinking about a commit message, maybe it's not worth it. I don't know. I've seen, I've seen like huge comments for a one line change and it was totally legit. So, you know, use your best judgment. Correctly identified is not necessary. Applied by the, okay. So, okay. This goes back to a little bit of what I was talking about before, where I said I would like to have sort of mod list aware paths. And this just isn't really, it's not really doable right now. The result of this output by the CFG generator is simply that you have a redundant path that is fully replaced. So it effectively does nothing. Um, you know, ideally we would just be optimized down to what you just need, but you know, this cannot, this isn't something that I can fix right now, but it is certainly in the long-term plan. It's, as I mentioned before, something that we got to be a little thoughtful about designing and implementing um, because the code is kind of at a place where, you know, we have sufficiently complicated queries. Um, once this is done, I can show you the actual numbers. But for example, this page loaded pretty quick. You'll know within a, a second, it was for sure loaded. But there is a submit a significant number of database queries on here um, because I'm not a database administrator. I'm just know enough to be dangerous. I like me some SQL for sure. But actually with the website, I'm using a, a, what's called an ORM, which lets me generate SQL with Python code. So I can say mod.objects.all parentheses instead of doing select star from blah, 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 blah. And, um, you know, when you when you have such an abstraction, it has its limits. And as you're about to see here, let's just go ahead and open the debug toolbar. And I want to point out something here on the side here. You can see this little SQL section right here. This is the important part. Now, also note, I'm going to click, and it's going to take a couple seconds to crunch. It's crunching, seriously, much more slowly than the other version. And you look right here, and you can see, oh, my, 239 queries in you know <laughs> hundreds of milliseconds and the cool thing about Django debug toolbar is we've got this awesome breakdown of all the queries that the RM barfed out and it also kind of gives you like a like see it says these are duplicated I'm like extremely inefficient here and this is after I've tried really hard to tweak it and within the confines of the ORM and be efficient. But yeah, I mean, you could just see like all this, oh my God, redundant queries happening all over the place. And that's why it's really slow locally. You just kind of scroll into the bottom. You have all these duplicate queries. Um, so sometime in my free time, I will become a database expert and I will learn how to fix all this perfectly. Until then, we just have to deal with it being kind of blah here and then amazingly fast here so as much as not to be an issue really um <clears throat> if you happen to be an unlucky visitor who is the first person to visit the page with a you know a cold cache it might take two or three seconds to load um <laughs> who doesn't like spaghetti gonzo indeed i'm actually a little hungry right now for some spaghetti Ooh. um but yeah you know um I would. Th I think that the what I have the performance I've worked out of here, although it relies on caching, if you got if you were unlucky enough to get a uh, empty cache, which I think the cache is um, four hours or six hours. So if you're the unlucky person who loads this with a you know a cold cache, it probably would be a two or three second load time. It still wouldn't be that bad. And I believe I have worked miracles with arguably a terrible database layout because again i'm not a dba i just kind of like started rigging things up until it worked and and also i'm kind of limited you know the orm is optimized and it's great i'm not junking on django it's amazing you should use it if you need to build a web app and you like python 
But, you know, there's limits, and it can't make up for my bad database design, which if you remember from last week, that was um, looking at the models and stuff. All right. Uh, let's check the work that we have done. And we can see here, even on this page, 101 queries just to list some mods. You know, I feel I can break that down to less than a dozen queries, maybe. You have this is a distinct table or column or whatever, and so is this. That's really it. You know, you could do this probably in two queries with the right joins and stuff. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. So let's, I need to have the, oops. need to have the git log up. What do you know? I goofed and didn't put an update date on the OMWFX shaders. Excuse me. I'm a big goof. Let's did that last night. 26. I don't know. 7 o'clock. I don't remember what time it was. It was after dinner. Irrelevant. Uh, okay. So coming back here, Ramirez ground cover. I love a good. Two of the snow prints is there. Okay, good. Good enough, I guess. I don't think I got a change log for this guy. No, no, I did. I sure did. Okay. All right, well. Eight queries. That's a bit better. See? Because, <laughs> yeah, we're only... And even eight, though, is probably too much for what we're getting here. If I may. Yeah, okay. We have to get what the mod list is. And then, okay. So, yeah. So this would be our redundant query right here. Not redundant. Definitely redundant. Yeah, well, hmm, maybe someday I can get a, a database expert to come on the stream and help me unbork it. I digress. Oh. Whoops. If you're watching, you may have noticed that. Normally, I would like to do one change, commit it, check it. I was kind of trying to move fast here. Oh, well. So we'll pretend that's gone. Oh, 74 changes in 5.3. It's getting really big. We got to round this off soon. I don't know if you can hear the... 
motorist. <laughs> All right. And I will respond to uh, Setiness a bit later and explain the other issue. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wow. Hey. Same graphics card as me, maybe. Interesting. South Wall Card Club. Oh, this feels like something that I solved. And it was a loading conflict between Saboteur facility and beautiful cities of Morrowind, if memory serves me. Let's check it out. Hmm, okay, well, is that where I have it? That's the question. Yeah, that's where I've got it. Okay, huh. not this po possibly not the same issue. I was wrong. Possibly wrong to jump to that. Uh, South Wall Corner Club. Well, let's go there, shall we? And I still haven't set up my game rig to stream. So I ex uh, excuse the potato quality. Shut off my compositor, maybe to get a few frames. Slideshow edition. South Wall Corner Club, though. Let's go. I like Setiness. <clears throat> I'm using Linux and also like Setiness. I am using Mesa for my graphics driver. Unlike them, I have an Intel high grade potato on this bad boy framework laptop of mine. And as you can see, we're very not blank screen here. So. <clears throat> okay, well, take a look at that log of theirs, and hmm. I mean, as you can see, I'm definitely getting that too, and it's just a warning. You know, I could write software and make errors admit as warnings, but that's wrong. Warnings typically are not, you know, going to break anything. It's just to, to warn you, hey, you know, you, you set that wrong or something. Cell reference not found. That's an error. It's even red to indicate. Failed to load. That's an error. You used the, huh. I missed that. Let's go back in there. But yeah, so th those are warnings. I don't see anything. Excuse me. I don't see anything really suspicious here whatsoever. This looks. Oh. Ooh. Hold up. That. That right there is no good. This is the problem right there. This is some OpenGL problem on their system, I think. Um, and so on their system, some Linux systems using typically AMD or Intel graphics cards will use Mesa for OpenGL and Vulkan, typically. It's not the, of course, not the only option. 
you could use uh, proprietary AMD stuff. Supposedly, yeah, there it is down there. AM sitting, not found. So I would expect something to be pretty awkward here, but maybe just the... <clears throat> Excuse me, the NPC that would be doing that is just not going to spawn because their mesh is gone. I don't know. I don't see the yellow diamond instead, though, as I was warned. Using marker error instead. Not seeing it. Okay, anyway. Hmm. So, this is almost certainly a problem. This, generally speaking, means that shaders are borked in some way. So I don't does not occur when Delta plugin is not loaded. Uh, that really confuses me, though. So it's one of two things. It's either this is clearly a problem, but it could also be a load order problem. And we had somebody pop in IRC the other day who had this issue or a similar issue with the lighthouse in St. Anine. There was some plugin that was not enabled and it made the interior simply not exist. And there was a black screen, which was just the void. And their player was falling forever because there was no place to spawn into. So, okay. Um, yeah, it sounds like another discussion I'll have to have with the user about that. So, not really sure. Okay, um, well, let's go back to the, excuse me, page one. Can I go back to page one, GitLab? <clears throat> okay. I feel like the order is wrong. Oh, it's updated because I assigned it. Okay. Whew. Confused me. That one I took care of. I should take care of all these. I should close them out. Yeah. Excuse me. Just burping up a storm today. It's the berries, I swear. So we did go ahead and already fix that. It goes to archive. I'm going to... Just assign that to myself. Oh my. Galileo good Gale, Galileo good clothes, not too familiar with. Hmm. So I think this is actually a open MW bug. Or a problem with their system. Maybe graphics drivers. But yeah, you can clearly see. Part of it's not rendering there. Is it because they're not using the right body for the clothes, maybe? We'll have to get back to them. Yeah, the 
this is a yeah this is an unfortunate another occurrence of the OpenMW launcher being a little janky and causing the poor users problems already fixed that one already fixed that one I'm gonna have to get back to that poor person outside of the stream because there's a few things going on there but if I had to guess you know they 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 may have tried to edit the config file while the launcher was open or maybe they had two launchers running and there's all kinds of issues that can happen with that unfortunately I feel like OpenMW invites you to in you know to edit the config file, particularly if you're somebody who's not afraid to edit a text file. You are invited to go in there and tinker around, <clears throat> but that it's an anti-pattern when you're using the launcher too, and it can cause problems. So maybe someday we can jump into the launcher code and fix that. Uh-oh. <clears throat> thank you so much, JJ Nova. If you're out there, thank you. So the question is, what cell is this? Oh, Lalu Council Manor. Great, okay. Shall we go? But first, we don't want to be blinded by the clouds. Maybe I should just, didn't we determine that that was the interior mist that makes it black? Let's see. So this appears to be something. This is an interior that is definitely affected by beautiful cities of Marwin. And you can see there's no um, such problem as shown by JJ Nova here. Deprecated asset. So perhaps this is something that happens when you're not using beautiful cities of Marwin. I'll note here that it looks like he's got the, you know, the total overhaul perhaps uh, we're missing you know better shaders for all lights or whatever that one was called let's try something no wait that's not gonna work probably isn't going to reveal anything, and it might be just something that was resolved in a BCOM update, is what I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, we're looking good. There wouldn't be a TR asset here by default anyway. It was pointless to check. So I think this is another one that we can consider solved. Oh yeah, these are a bunch of ones. I'm going to have to... I, 
I will manage these after the stream. Wow, <laughs> we're getting caught up. This is really great. A lot of these, I'm going to close about a dozen or two issues by the end of this weekend. This feels really great. We're getting somewhere. All right, we can get on to the fun stuff. Gonzo says, it can be frustrating how aggressively the launcher edits those files. Agreed. He also says, I think there was a separate problem with the lighthouse specifically. Also, yeah, yeah, there definitely was. Uh, that person was simply not loading some plugin, I think. Um, so that was different from the mist swirling thing. All right, let's. Kind of lost track of what I was doing here for a minute. Uh, oh yeah, we want to we want to leave shell. Let's run some tests. <clears throat> when those pass, assuming they do, I'm going to go ahead and push that up to GitLab. That'll tag the appropriate issues that I marked in the commit log. And, uh, huh. This moment where we're getting, like, towards the end of the, the list, and I've got time. I've got, like, a half hour. Um, oh, my. I'm going to just mark that as done because I didn't look into that at all. Um, Twitch chat overlay in the video. I did think I do want to do that just because there's a lot of, like, context from the chat. You know, when people are in there, so. Let's take a look at what I got here. Mod list guidebook mod. Oh, yeah. Good. While that's crunching, we'll. Uh, yeah, Gonzo commenting about the chat overlay. The stream lags, stream lags makes it stream labs makes it plug and play. I will definitely keep that in mind. It would be also nice to have like a, I don't know, I kind of wanted like a blur of the background thing. If you can even see it, my exercise room back there which is soon going to be my drum room. All right, and it looks like the test's just finished. Outstanding. Uh, yeah, so why don't we go ahead and add the NWAS guide. And um, again, this is just uh, an idea I had. Um, as I've been sort of uh, revisiting the website and keeping it up to date <clears throat> and interacting with various folks who are having the same experience going through the mod lists. And it's occurred to me, you know, wow, you might spend like if you're quit your day job and you did it dedicated, you're going to spend like a week to do, you know, let's see, 412 mods plus or minus whatever you add or take out. And by the time you get to this part where you're getting your landing in Satan and you finally get to play the game, you might not totally remember all the neat stuff that you added, all the quests, all the content and stuff. And so the idea was create an in-game book that, you know, briefly goes over the things that you might want to, you spent time working on adding into the game, you might want to look at it now. Um, and, you know, we're version 1.1 right now. You got this NPC in there. That's me. Johnny Hostile. And, you know, version one, you walk up to me, you come out of the excise office, and I'm right there. I will auto-greet you when you're close enough. You could theoretically greet me first, though. Um, and I'll give you the book, and I'll speak to you like I'm speaking to you now. Um, but in the future version, when OpenMW Lua is a bit more mature and we have, let's say, greater control over user interface it would be awesome to have like a book that is like a checklist or something you know um kind of like i have my little checklists over here for the to-do list it would be really cool to have something like that in the game and it totally would be possible eventually in the future who knows when 
but yeah, so that's how I want to, I want to grow it in that direction eventually. Um, I thought it might also be cool to, um, oh, oh, I'm missing a books category. We get to add that. How lovely. Uh, I thought it might also be cool to maybe, you know, right now it's just me speaking, welcoming people. But hey, man, maybe somebody else wants to, you know, record a greeting and, and whatever. And we could randomly select somebody, you know. Um, so let me see. We'll see if anybody wants to do that. We're going to make a new category for this one called books. Okay. Excuse me. going to point them to GitLab by default. The reason why pointing to GitHub for Tomb of the Snowprints, for example, was problematic was because they provided a different package at GitHub that was not friendly to Mod Organizer 2. The package at GitLab is identical to the package I uploaded to Nexus Mods. Both should be friendly to any mod management software. I'm going to link to GitLab by default just because... It's my preferred venue. Hmm, actually. Let's put all of this in there. <clears throat> Save people a click if they straight up just don't want to go to GitLab. They want that Nexus link. I got you. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Yeah, I mean, not really 
much else. Oh, we're going to need this, though. And we're going to need this. You know, something like this really doesn't matter where you load it. Nothing is using the audio tracks I'm shipping with it. Nothing is shipping a plugin with the same name. It can really go anywhere. Boom. And actually, I don't mind saying, since I talked about this mod a little bit, um, I feel like I should talk a little bit about how I made the mod. Um, it's, I think, typical when you're building a mod for Morrowind that you're going to run the, the TES construction kit executable. You might even run the, the leveled up version that comes with the script extender. Probably aren't going to use OpenMWCS to build like a full project, but I think you could do that for this one. Um, it's uh, you know simple enough that it probably all the functionality of OpenMWCS can fulfill our needs. Um, but one of the things I wanted to do was avoid <clears throat> use definitely avoid using the vanilla CS because although it works reasonably well with Wine, you can't create a blank plugin with it easy to work around um it's still slow as get out and all the known bugs and maybe the mwsc expansion to it fixes a lot of those i don't even know if that runs with wine so i wanted to avoid basically at all costs using you know um the cs tools and i basically stuck with um cs.js which um if you're not familiar, is this thing created by Asmaru, also known as Evil Eye, and um, it's, you know, it's fantastic. Uh, it's a web browser-based version of the dialogue editing stuff from the uh, vanilla construction kit, but without any of the hang-ups of the vanilla construction kit, and also, as it says here, cannot do all the other things the construction kits and can so you know outside of dialogue it's obviously not helpful but man you know dialogue was what this mod was and so i was able to basically use all text tools and you can see here uh well taking a step back you can see here on the make file i have a pretty you know build is delta plugin convert I've got a shortcut for converting it to JSON with TES3 conversion, you know, um, by Greatness 7. Just how I like to work. Very command line, text-based workflow. I don't like to rely on GUIs a lot, personally. And so for this one, I might have... I fired up OpenMWCS as a reference a couple of times, a sanity check, right? Because something in here, for example, I can't just type, like, sound and, and then know, like, all the fields that are supposed to be there. So I would fire up OpenMWCS, add the sound, and then dump the plugin that it gives me, and then see, ah, okay. And then any further tweaks I needed to make to the sound, you know, I would make here in YAML format, and then do a make build from the command line, and boom, have a new fresh plugin. And yeah, so the idea is further edits to the book. I simply edit the plain text here, rebuild it, and ship the release away, and I don't have to go into the CS... OpenMW or vanilla or otherwise and, and deal with like a user interface. It's just text. I can edit it with a text editor. Granted, it's HTML embedded in YAML as a string, which sounds really, really gross. It works. So yeah, that's my spiel about the mod and how I made it.
and some of the reasoning um, about my workflow. Because I described this workflow to people who make mods. I described it to Iggy of Starwind back when I made Marksman's Eye, and he just was like, you're insane. You can't do that, you know, and he's maybe he's right, but I still try. All right. Got a little sidetracked here. So this is going in to the total overhaul mod list for sure. And expanded vanilla. And it doesn't really fit in the other ones because it mentions content that is simply not present. Uh, oh yeah, we're not even in there anymore. Okay. Moving this here so I can create a new books subcategory. And I'm also going to mention that this is totally optional. I don't want people to think that they need to use this. Um, I'm going to do that right now. It was totally optional. Just a fun, possibly stupid idea that I had. But it's optional. This is not. It's lore unfriendly. It requires OpenMW. It's pointless probably without my mod lists. Can I probably take away from your game if you aren't using the mod lists here? fair to say I don't want somebody to be like oh my god I need this and then get in the game and be like why is this guy talking to me oh hi uh Kagan welcome yeah update to the mod list I was just describing uh the addition of a little thing I put together here which is an Enwa's guide to modern culture and mythology and it's just a quick companion book for the mod list to remind you of what to check out when you're in the game. And so putting that in the lists, clarifying here, though, that it's definitely optional. Um, but I think it's fun. I had fun making it for sure. So uh, welcome, and I hope you're doing well today. Uh, oh, you know what? We got one more. We're going to put this in expanded vanilla. Ah, okay. Tested it a few uh, months back, the mod list, and suggested settings did not work so well with the updated mods, the volumetric cloud, and the suggested to, to disable the vanilla sky. Right. Yeah, and I have... Uh, that's Thank you for mentioning that. And I've since gone, since gone back on that suggestion, and now... Uh, I am recommending folks to keep the vanilla sky because it's just as sweet as the clouds look. You know, you got to have the moon. You got to have the moons. You got to have the stars. You know, there's just a lot that you miss. Um, and it's not a knock on Zester's work, of course. It's phenomenal. You know, just the engine. The engine will get there. And someday we'll have volumetric clouds and stars and moons in the sky. And everything will be great. So yeah, again, thank you for bringing that up, and uh, the the instructions have been changed accordingly. I go here, post processing. Yep, camera. Right after camera. Wait, no, it needs to be before camera. Yeah. Yeah, the sky is, uh, by default, I think the sky is a little empty. Um, when you're using the default uh, values of the volumetric clouds. And uh, 
the grass suggestions. Do you mean the plugin names? He says the gra- the suggestion for grass are no longer correct. Uh, yeah, we just fixed that earlier in the stream, actually. So give it a couple minutes. We're about to deploy the website. Uh, we're in the last kind of 10 minutes of the stream. And uh, yeah, yeah, we fixed that earlier, my friend. Um, that was somebody reminded me on Discord about that. I have been reminded a few times and just kind of forgot. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's going out there today. Thank you for bringing it up. Throw this one in there. I would like to have a, a book for one day, modernize someday. That would be pretty good. Maybe revisit to the content of that. Maybe I'll sync up with Rob sometime if he's not busy and we can kind of look like what's the 2023 outlook on that. Oh, interesting. Hmm. I didn't change, so I'm confused. Okay, so maybe uh, Kagan says the old site suggested to generate the grass with settings that caused a massive overload, but then to use INI settings to reduce the density. Um, can you clarify, like, uh, what? So, what kind of over? Like, did it kill your frame rate, for example? Um, I'm curious about that. Let me know. Cool, cool. The TR grass names. Yeah, me too, right? So we might have been talking about something different, and I may not have actually fixed that. Um, However, I do want to note that the density settings that I suggested last time I checked actually were higher than the default density setting. We can confirm that, though. TX556, welcome. Uh, quick question. I'm using Total Overhaul, and Ash Namu location is straight up not there. The door is not on the mainland or the map. Huh, okay. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't know what cell that is. Give me just a minute, and we can look. I'm looking for... Maybe it's not on here. The Caldera Mind. Okay. Oh! They did move that. Uh, Caldera Mine Expanded mod moves the door. It's in the description on the mod page. We can go look at that in just a quick sec. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep, yeah, they moved that. Um, But I need to go first before I forget. Let's check the ground cover default. Ground cover settings. Density 1.0. And what am I saying? Oh, you know what? No, I think you're right, Kagan. I did say to, yeah, you're very welcome. TX556. Awesome. Thank you. I'm almost positive that's what it is. Density. Okay. I'm mistaken. My personal settings, I do increase the density. Um, But I am saying to reduce it by half. Maybe that doesn't look so good, huh? When you use the site, three grass mods. Yeah, okay. So oh, you might it might have been a while then since you have um, checked out the content. Um, but now all of the grass plugins come from beautiful cities of Morrowind. They're all generated by Randapal, who is basically a superhero. And um, Yeah, um, so you might have been looking at one of my janky old ground cover plugins, Kagan, and I deeply apologize about that. <laughs> uh, but let's go. So back to what you said, though. I'm suggesting density 0.5, and I frankly don't use that value myself. Let's have a reminder of what that looks like here. 
we got the last couple minutes of the stream here before we kick off a deploy on the website and get that update out there. Ground cover density. Ah, Kagan says, all in all, damn good mod list that is easily customizable. Efforts are highly appreciated. Hey, thank you so much for the kind words, and I'm glad you found it useful. And, you know, that's why we're here today and every weekend keeping it going. We are lucky enough to be in a community of a 21-plus-year-old game that is extremely active, you know? And so, like, if I got to change some stuff because things updated, I mean, hey, that's great, you know? That's really great. So, uh, if you're new to the stream, I just want to say apologies about the potato quality here. Bear with me. Uh, in a future stream... I have to set up my actual, this is not my gaming rig, this is my developer's laptop, which is, uh, you know, A plus for developing. It's got an Intel integrated graphics card, which is generally okay, actually, but on the stream it comes off as a little potato-y, so, you yeah, know, forgive me. Okay, wow, it does look a little awkward. It's like, so let that burn into your brain real quick. And let's uh, change that back. Oh, geez. Mm. Another comment from Kagan. As good as OpenMW is with dealing with draw call overhead. I'll comment on that in a second. Instead, uh, from Siegel, yeah. Uh, suggest running an Atlas generator or not using HD textures for that part of Tamriel Rebuilt. That's a phenomenal recommendation. Honestly, in the future, I want to provide, uh, look at, just look how much more, you know, you double, you take it from 0.5 to 0.1, and it does look a lot nicer. It's a lot more full. Maybe I should raise that. I don't know. I tried to keep it conservative because not everybody has like a decent rig, but also the ground cover feature is almost free if you have a graphics card that's, you know, made in the past 10 years. Um, let's real quick, though, for the benefit of TX556, let's just go ahead and uh, Caldera Mine Expanded. Yeah, Ashamanu. I just looked at this the other day. You're good. Vanilla base location has been moved from the north side of the mine to the south side and has been expanded. So there you go. Happy mining. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> You're very welcome. It's my pleasure. <sighs> I have a dilemma now, though. Time to go mining. You enjoy. I have a little bit of a dilemma now, though. I don't know. Should I keep the default? I mean, you raise a good point, Kagan. This looks a little awkward. Density 0.5. It's a little awkward. I don't know if I want to keep it that way. I think I'm going to bump it up. Nice. Play TES3 mainly on your living room rig that runs Linux and has a Radeon card in it. And you know what? That's exactly how I play I've got a, my PC hooked up to my TV. I sit back on the couch with a wireless keyboard and uh, rock and roll. What does the min, Gonzo says, what does the min chunk size and setting do and why do I have it disabled in my settings? Ah, you noticed in my personal settings. Radeon 7, not just Radeon. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, going back to Gonzo's question, which is a good question. I have it disabled in my settings because I'm using the default and I don't remember exactly what it does. So let's just take a look here. Oh. I think it was removed. I think it was probably removed. Let's see here. Good catch, Gonzo. Thank you. Yeah, it's gone. There are no such setting in OpenMW anymore. Let's for posterity just look in the source code. Sirs uh, OpenMW AD. 
Nothing. There you have it. What does it do? Nothing. Let's erase it. Good. Very good. Catch. <laughs> Min chunk size. All right. Going to bump the density up. Thank you for the comment, Kagan. Yeah, you know what? That must have been um, a setting that they had in the very early days of the ground cover feature before 0 0.47 even came out. And, um, yeah, they probably removed it. And Yeah, exactly. And I just didn't get the memo until today. And, yeah, thank you, Kagan, for the suggestion. Uh, no, it's definitely not a thing. I looked in the source code and wasn't even in there anymore as of 0 0.48. So, yeah, they they ripped it out. Um, and thank you for the suggestion about density. I'm bumping it up to 1 because it does look a little awkward. Oh, wait. I never committed this. Added. Good. Yeah, yeah. Indeed. Finally replaced. Good. Huh? Yeah, see, on some of them I had already removed it. So maybe I did get the memo? It's really hard to say. <laughs> I'm not going to think about it too much. Alrighty then. So let's go ahead and... Higher density looks less off. Alrighty, well, we're about to wrap up the stream here. Let's do our ritual test server. And let's take a look at some of the stuff that I wouldn't want to do possibly tomorrow. Let's see here. All right, so yeah, I mean a reasonably good, we had a very kind of fuzzy checkbox item here that kind of, and uh, yeah very productive i agree gonzo this was a little bit of a fuzzy one that encompassed a lot of work um yeah thank you and i'm glad you're here thank you for coming on gonna be back tomorrow taking on some of these other things um but there's some cool stuff this one would be a cool one to do there's also um how i recently added to have a custom uh folder Ooh, yeah look at that <laughs> tests Doing what they should do. Unable to find an exact match for this. Bad Monday. Oh, you know what? Because I didn't, you know, I made a brand new category for this guy, but I didn't actually make the category. Nor did I tell the rest of my deploy script that the books category exists and to pop populate data into the database from it. It's my data. Probably not necessary for me to import it as a capital, but I wanted to. Oh, come on. Excuse me. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, Kagan says mention OAAB data is a resource. It says O data, but I assume OAAB data is a resource and not a mod. Well, so... um. I do have it under the category modding resources. And the description does say it's a free to use asset repository, but that's good. Um, that's good feedback. You know, maybe the usage notes should say that it doesn't, excuse me, on its own really add anything. Um, 
<laughs> yeah. Well, you know, maybe I've learned that if something on here, well, I've also learned, yeah, I've learned that if something on here makes sense to me, it doesn't necessarily make sense to everybody else. And so maybe they kind of glanced at this and weren't really clear about it, you know, um, give them the benefit of the doubt. Um, so maybe there is some verbiage here that could be um, updated or something, but I'm going to leave it at that for now. Um, let's take a look at the website update that we got going here. Uh, whoa, 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 I did something though. Oh, yeah. All right, so this time around I will satisfy this condition. Oh, <laughs> or did I lie? Okay, generate mod. Oh, the category doesn't exist. Okay. Uh, just remembering how I do all this. Ah, okay. Um, add uh, Sterk to the list. That's something that has come up a couple times recently. Um, and I removed Sterk because when the recent Tamriel data update explosion happened, um, you know, uh, it wasn't clear if it was going to be updated or how long it would take for it to be updated. And the last thing I wanted to do was to have a bunch of users on my website, which if we just take a quick look here at the level of traffic that the website gets in a week, we've got 47,498 visits and I didn't want to send those people to the PC project like oh when are you going to update when are you going to update you know because I know how that can be when you're doing something for fun as a hobby and, and people are depending on you to get an update and even asking you repeatedly when is it going to come out and so I removed it from the lists to hopefully avoid some of that pressure on the project because I know they've been working a lot on a big update that's going to have Anvil in there. Um, so I removed it from the list and then sure enough, a week later they updated to be compatible. And it is still on the website, of course, and the related BCOM patch is still covered. Um, I was planning on waiting to re-add it to mod lists until uh, they updated for the Anvil update. Because the content here, the creators, I believe, still consider it kind of an alpha content. And that's fair. I mean, it's beautiful content. But it it was like the first release, you know. So it's coming back. Um, just not right now. But that's a good uh, point to bring up about this mod, which is amazing. I love the, you know, the exterior. It's utterly beautiful. What's not beautiful... Yeah, yeah, it wasn't in the game. I didn't know about it until the project came out. Um, so what's not beautiful, though, is my thing blowing up here. Um, and I'm trying to... This is like a part of the code I haven't really looked at in a minute. So please forgive me for appearing to not know what the hell I'm doing. I swear I do. Categories happen here. When it, that's blog. Categories happen right here. Cats. Categories mod cats. Okay, I'm clearly missing something here. And we're zeroing in on it. Mod categories mod cats. Uh-huh, yeah, okay. Wait, no, that looks good. You're killing me. Book. Books. <laughs> Oops. Let's try that again. And going back to your comment about TES4 dropping Sterk, um, I personally feel like their interpretation of Anvil, no offense to the team that made Oblivion, deep respect to all of them. I love Oblivion. It's a great game, but... I feel like Province Serial Project is, has just a better take on Anvil. And if you haven't seen it yet, I think they have, 
alpha files available or just wait for the release, but it's going to be just mind-blowingly good. TX556, what's not beautiful, is not giving us a way to buy me a beer. Wow. Hey, that's really nice. I really appreciate it. It's the thought that counts, okay? Um, and I really appreciate that. <laughs> Gonzo, wow, really? Haven't looked at it yet? <sighs> Check it out. Um, when we were recording the 0 0.47 release video, Atualpa and I, we had plans to cover the content from Sturk. And I honestly can't remember if we put any of it. No, it's Sturk, uh, Anvil. I can't remember if we put any of it in the video. I don't think we did. But they do have it. Yeah, if you go on their forums, I think you can find, or maybe on their Discord. It's been a while. It's out there. The files are out there. Check out the Anvil stuff. It's just, you know, uh, my family is from Greece, and I've been there a couple of times. And just the the way that their take on Anvil and Sturk, it just gives me like a Mediterranean vibe, and it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside, and I just love it. Uh, why does my site call? Kagan says, by the way, why does my site call for fonts? I see no difference when allowing that. Uh, God, that's a great question. Oh, my. Yeah, I goofed something else with the test. We'll just divert from that in a minute here. My site wants fonts because I'm using Font Awesome. And so I'm guessing it's this guy right here that loads the fonts. Um, and I'm using Font Awesome for stuff like uh, this little thing right here, the icons here and there. I'm generally against using icons. Like, I would be 100% against having just the icon here for accessibility reasons, right? Um, somebody who needs to rely on a screen reader isn't going to be able to interpret just what the icon means. But yeah, just here and there, tastefully using, hopefully tastefully using icons. Uh, thank you for noticing that. Yeah, a block fonts to avoid fingerprinting. Good move. Very good. Um, it's a little unfortunate that the fonts awesome, you know, by default is grabbing stuff from... Google, but here we are. Um, yeah, so that's what that is. <laughs> You're not missing out too much, really, um, if you don't go along with those. So, okay, what what did I break here? I'm going a little long. I hope you guys don't mind. What did I break here? The order, out of order, action camera swap, total overhaul. So what you're seeing here, by the way, I have written a series of tests, if you're familiar with programming at all you know about unit tests i've written a series of tests to check my data on the website and make sure i didn't goof anything up like i say you're supposed to have this load order but then i put it in that load order and it's wrong things to you know because i'm a human and i make mistakes fancy icons ah yeah <laughs> yeah i should look into that and make and figure out how to remove calls if possible to google it's an old version of font awesome too i haven't updated it uh, since like 2018 or maybe older. Yeah. I done goofed. There we go. That should be it. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. I, and actually, thank you for noticing that. By the way, Kagan says, by the way, Font Awesome delivers the copyright symbol as well. And actually, there is a Unicode character for that that I could use for this instead of the Font Awesome image. So, yikes. Feel like sending a patch? It's most welcome. Otherwise, someday I will. Maybe tomorrow we can look at that. Um, let me put that on the list. There's either a Unicode or there's like a HTML ampersand kind of thing for it. So yeah, thank you for noticing that. <laughs> it's probably been that way for a long time. All right, here we go. The moment of truth. And if this goes well, I'm going to push all the changes that we made today up to GitLab. Kind of make it official. Um, and I'm going to deploy the website. Not a developer. Ah, okay, yeah. 
Cool. That no, that was a. I mean, that was a good question that probably any developer didn't notice. I certainly didn't notice it. So good catch. But yeah, if this, if these periods are all periods, boom, there we go. <sighs> C or C plus plus, awesome. I have avoided that kind of stuff, that little corner of programming. I've made a couple very trivial ed edits to OpenMW. I wanted to experiment with adding a command to MW script, for example, and that's like, you know, pretty easy. Even a dummy like me can figure that out. Um, but yeah, maybe someday we'll go into C++ land and look at the editor or something, uh, the launcher, I mean. Cool, NWAS guide added in, awesome. Feels good. All right. That's going out there. Books. Books, books, books. We need more books. All right. I feel I feel great. I feel accomplished. Um, we got a really good amount of stuff done. Basically the only thing we didn't get done was this, which is, you know, I like kick the can on this for a while. Um it's not it's hardly critical. People can download the validator from modding hall. But, you know, it would be just to be consistent because I have, uh, if you're not familiar, I've got this whole GitLab organization going on here. And as I've mentioned before, the GitLab people who run GitLab.com have graciously given me a free ultimate account. So I get all kinds of cool features and it's very generous, generous of them. And I'm grateful for that. They also give such a benefit to the OpenMW project. Very generous. Very grateful. But as you can see here, yeah, I got a whole boatload of things. Two pages now even of stuff. Wow, this is my unreleased sprinting mod that is as of yet unfinished maybe we'll finish that um there's a couple of things that we could do here uh okay uh K kagan says as a as a comment here for switch ruse from vanilla to open mw using existing saves a guide on how to use the importer would be nice well so Perhaps a page on the importer is due, but actually the importer is woefully out of date, woefully underdeveloped. It basically doesn't work at all. It like you shouldn't even use it for a purely vanilla save. Um, they don't even ship the importer anymore if you download like a Windows build or something. I don't think you're even gonna get it on a dev build. So maybe we do need a page for the curious. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, it doesn't even work on fully unmodded. It does. It's not even recommended to work on anything. Um, there just is nobody that has worked on it for years, and it's kind of gotten a little bit rot, you know. So that's a good idea. I'm gonna put that on here too. We should have a page covering it, information for it, and maybe just the existence of the information might inspire somebody to hack on it, you know. Uh, save importer page. Um, all right, that's a really good call out, Kagan. Thank you something that we could put on there that would be uh, useful for people that aren't totally in the know. And so this is the part of the stream where I deploy the website. I use my tool set to push the changes that we made throughout the day out there. Um, if there are changes that are going out, sometimes there aren't. And uh, so there they go. And I want to bid you farewell. Thank you for joining us. We went a little long today, but it's been great. I loved every minute of it. And uh, ooh, one more comment here. Yeah, so, okay, Kagan mentions that the plugin format and the save format are the same, and that's correct. I think the issue is simply that, like, translating the save into whatever OpenMW uses is just incomplete, and there are some things that are broken. Um, maybe tomorrow we can look at the uh, OpenMW issue tracker and kind of look and see what's there. But, uh, yeah, you know, if you're looking for some C++ to chew on, my friend... That's something that is in need of some love, and I know a lot of people would really, you know, sh I mean, if we could even get it to support mods in some loose capacity, it would be great. But okay, let's wrap it up. We got the de uh, the deployment of the website going out, beta staging, and then the live one. So maybe in about ten minutes, we'll see all our updates out there. I thank you all for joining. It's been a blast. Have a great day, and I will maybe see you guys tomorrow. Peace. <laughs>